Nanach nachmo nachmo yimon seif Yisrael sabo Chapter and New World of Yisrael and Friends Sing From the Songs of Breast Live Nanach nachmo nachmo yimon Oy oy what I received What I saw of what is Breast Live This is something new What Rabbein revealed was never before revealed in the world And it will transform the whole world And guide every person to know Why he is living Why he came to the world Rabbein Nachman of Breast Live is the Rebbe of all the Jews of all Israel And he teaches each one and shows him What is a Jew? What is the Torah? What is his faith, he can teach each person, he can teach each person and grant him, oh, your rectification for all his sins, until there will not be any Jew who will, who will be lost at all, only that all of them will merit to search for God, all of them will convert to truth, to Torah, to such a faith that was never before in the world, the time has come for Rabbeinu to be revealed in the world already, and there will be a completely new world, a world of truth, a world of faith, a world of true wisdom, such a Torah, such a light, such holiness, such wisdom was never before in the world, this is something new, it was in the world already, but without the root, today it is with the root. Rabbeinu Nebi Nachman is the root of all the Torah, of all the tzaddikim. Rabbeinu reveals and draws down such a light, like none that was ever in the world. Which encompasses all the delights. Such a, a light will come to this world, but I do not know when. But soon, not far off, we are now seeing great changes for good concerning the light of the truth that Rabbeinu will be, rebe- will be revealed and a new world will be, rec- will be created and everyone will cast away the cravings and all of them will want only to serve God in truth. Fortunate are we that today we have entirely new lights, such a light like Rabbi Na- such a light like Rabbi Nachman was never before revealed in the world and through it all the world will draw close to God and to the Torah and to faith and truth. Everyone needs to know what we have today, such lights, such wondrous light, like no light that had ever been before, such a light that is new and needs to be revealed now. It is higher than everything. We do not know anything of the breakthroughs that are now in the world. There will be a new light in the world, completely new. Thus, says Rabbeinu, oh, 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 Now is the time of the light, the time of the redemption. I received a note from Rabbeinu saying that the time of the redemption is very close. It was in a dream. I saw Rabbi Yisrael from Kadun, and he gave me a scroll and a, co- and a coverlet, and the coverlet was very beautiful. I did not know what this was. I thought it was a scroll to read. I opened it and withdrew a section from the scroll of the Yalkut, the Yalkut compilation. It was a piece of paper and Rabbeini read. And Rabbeini read four words. The time and Rabbeini read four words. The time of the redemption is very close. These four words were written in large, very, very beautiful letters. The paper had such beauty and the writing as well. The time of the redemption is very close. Well, but very close can mean a thousand years. This is also very close. What is very close? We know nothing. We do not know what year, what month, what day. We know only what is written in the Gemara in Nisan. They were redeemed, and in Nisan they will be redeemed. But which year we do not know. Only the time of redemption is very close. Finished. Where, where is the very close? When will it be? I wanted to draw out another piece of paper and see what was written there. No, it was already closed. Impossible to take out another paper. That was enough. The time of the redemption is very close. So, who can give an interpretation of what is very close? Nothing. We know nothing. Do you, do you want to know when? Make all the calculations you want. Fifty years have already passed, and it still has not been revealed. But now every day more is being revealed. Some new matter. Now that now there will be a completely new world. A world of wrestling. Who am I to say words like these? Rabbeinu could speak. He said thus. Every one of his, of, of his words is completely new. Completely new. What Rabbeinu revealed, there is nothing like it in the world. There was never in the world such a light, such a wonder, unique. He is unique in the world. There is no other in the world. All that he revealed, all that he says, includes all the Torah and all. Da, da, da. Never before was there novelty like this in the world new. No. He ascended above all the wisdoms, above all the Torah, above all the tzaddikim, above everything, yes. He revealed this. One who is a simple-minded fool and does not 
Accept this, he will regret and overturn. All the liars will go to the grave. All who do not want to submit themselves to the truth will go, go, go. They will be annulled entirely. All the sages will be totally annulled in the face of one word from Rabbi Nachman. All the heretics and all the wicked will return to God and to the Torah and accept the yoke of the Torah and on themselves and merit to such a fate that never was in, that never was in all the history of the world. The time will come when everything will be overturned and all the world will be only truth and faith. There will be a full redemption. There will be light of the redemption. It will come soon, quickly. Oh, what will be? We do not know what, what is this. There is already Rabbi Nachman in the world, so all the world will be a different world, a world of the Mashiach. It will be a new world. Oy vey, oy vey. Master of the world, fortunate are we, how good is our portion, and how pleasant is our lot. Now it is already known in the world, all the world very much loves and respects Rabbi Rabbi Nachman and praises him and says, a sage like this was never before in the world. A light of wisdom like this was never before revealed in the world. Never before was there something like this. Such a Lakita Miran, such words, such discourses, only one word from Lakita Miran, and Sapir Masis, annuls everything, annuls everyone. The Kita Miran, whoever heard such teachings, whoever heard such teachings and stories and discourses, never before were they in the world. Oh, Rabbeini already exists in the world, and he gave us Lakita Miran and Sapir Masis and Lakita Halachas and Lakita Tfilis. He has already created a new world, a new world, not this world, rather a new world of Torah and prayer, a world of serving God. Every word that Rabbeini revealed in the world creates an entirely new world, entirely new. Do you know what is Nachman? Na, Nach. Nachman, Nachman, Mimon. That is all. There is already Rabbeinu in the world. There is already Nanach in the world. What this is, we still don't know at all. Nachman, Mimon is all the Torah in its entirety and all the wisdom in the world. Nanach, Nachman, Nachman, Mimon. It is everything. What I suffer, I do not know how I live in this world. All my life, all the world, everyone who saw me in the market would point his finger and say, He is Breslov, Breslov, Breslov. I was an object of derision and mockery. I had ten children and did not have anything to give them, not bread and not clothes and not anything. I was the last. I was the last. Rabbi Yisrael Kadura came from Russia. He had drawn close to Rabbeini, and everyone said that he was such a force that among the Hasidim of Breslov there were none like him. I drew close to him, and at that time, and at that time, there were heavy opposition to Breslov. And thank God, I stood my ground in the war with all the Torah leaders. My family and everyone were also opposed, and what I suffered for being Breslov. But there is such a force of wisdom that gives life and vitality, and that is Rabbeinu. Rabbi Nachman, Nanach Nachman, Nachman, Yuman. I was more than once near death, with no hope of remaining alive, and thank God Rabbeini revived me and brought me out of everything. And when I sing Nanach, then all flee, then all in brackets the troubles and the brackets flee. I was already in the hand of the angel of death, he wanted to seize me, but I sang Nanach, then he left, fled, fled. Now is such a time. Never before did we see a man of 104 years. This is something new. I myself am new every day. I do not know if this is my last day or not. I was five years with Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna. I merited to see a true chassid of Breslov. I did not know that Rabbi Yisrael would pass away. He lived only approximately 40 years. I thought he would live to be an old man, but he was elderly. But he was elderly. He came with all the days that he lived. He served God and was constantly involved in Torah and prayer and faith in such joy. And he inspired me with such a light and also truthful holy people who drew close to Rabbeini. And there was such a truth. And there will be. This will always exist. There will be such a light in the world, such a wonder that was never before in the world. Now it is going to be revealed and there will be a new world, a new world. Thank God I am living after 70 years. I'm living after more than 70 years, I'm living after 70 years, and I see and feel that I will merit to live a good and long life. Now I want to spend the days of my life in, at two places. I want to live in Yerushalayim near the Western Wall, or to be by Rabbi Shimon Ma'yuchoy in Meron, or by other holy tzaddikim. I need to spread out in the world. I need to spread out in the world. To wander one time to, Reb, to Shimon Ma'yuchoy, another time to another tzaddik or another, this is what I need now. I do not have another work. This is the primary work. This is the main vitality in this world. And I need to be one time here, one time here, one time here to pray to the blessed God. But not, 
I have no connection to the world. Who is the world? The world is the Torah, the truth, the light of truth. Rabbi Nachman revealed that he is entirely new. He revealed such wellsprings of wisdom that were never before revealed even by Rabbi Shimon Baichoi. He revealed to his holy student Rabbi Nassim. He revealed who is Rabbi Nachman, who this is. Such light, such a wonder was never before in the world. It is completely new, new, meaning that it was never before revealed in the world. If not, then it would, then it would not be new. Rabbeinu is completely new. The world laughed at me, and now, and now, now I laugh at all the world. Do you know who I am? Rabbeinu said to his people, Do you know who I am? No, no, you don't know. I am Nanach Nachmo, Nachmo Yuman. I am the Rebbe of all Israel. I am the Rebbe of all the Jews. Nanach Nachmo, Nachmo Yuman. Who knows? Who knows with whom I am speaking? Who knows? Who knows with whom I am speaking? I do not know with whom I am speaking. But words of truth like these, words of faith like these, were never before in the world. Chapter Kugel and Chunt. In this chapter, I brought two of the incredible stories of Rabbi Yisrael. And you, reader, do not be confounded by these words to question them. For even in spite of the principle that Torah texts do not leave their simple meaning, these holy words are not to be understood on the simple level at all. Kugel and Chunt. This is a good story. When my, when my mother was 40, she gave birth to twins. A woman of 40 has difficulty giving birth, and she gave birth to twins, a son and a daughter. I was the son and the daughter, my sister. Well, do you need to eat? There is here something to eat. Thank God, all who want to eat, come to the Moroccan shul, synagogue, and eat kugel and chuns. My sister, when she became 40, gave birth to twins, a son and a daughter. The son is me, and the daughter is my sister. The kugel and the chulent are so tasty, and every Shabbos I and my sister make kugel and chulent. She makes the chulent, and I make the kugel. That is a novelty. There is enough to eat all through the week. As soon as they hear that there is kugel and chulent, all of Yishalayim comes on Sunday to eat the kugel and chulent. All who want to eat kugel and chulent, come to me. There will be kugel and chulent all through the week. The son and the daughter also gave birth to twins, a son and a daughter. All of Meishoim and the Hungarian houses know about these twins. When Shabbos, when Shabbos comes, there is again what to eat, kugel and cholent. All who want to eat kugel and cholent, they should come to the son and the daughter, to the twins, the brother and sister. They have a lot of kugel and a lot of cholent. There is enough to eat all through the week. A great blessing. My sister, if she gives birth again to a son and daughter, then there will be much kugel and cholent. There will be what to eat. That is a full story. This is a full story. When my sister became 40, gave, gave birth to twin, gave birth to twins, a son and a daughter. The son is me and the daughter my sister. There is, thank God, what to eat all week, kugel and chulant. The story of, she, of the sheep. The story of the sheep. Listen to the story. This is from the Shulchan Aruch. On the first page, he brings several stories from Torah leaders. One needs to see the story in the Shulchan Aruch. It is not hard to find. One of the scholars told him not to learn from this book, and he did not listen to the scholar, and he learned. Then the scholar gave him a curse, Aha, oh, sheep will come to your house and eat everything, everything that you need to eat, and everything, and will eat everything. Sheep will come to your house and eat everything, everything that you need to eat, and you already won't have anything to eat in the night. I told you not to learn from this book, Shulchan Aruch, and you learned. Well, well, there will yet come sheep to your house, and they will eat everything you need to eat, and there will be nothing for you to eat. And thus it was. Sheep came and ate everything, and they did not have anything to eat. The curse was fulfilled. You did not hear the news? This is beautiful news. I laughed a great deal from the story. I wanted to meet, or see in brackets and in brackets, I wanted to meet the one who gave the curse, but I could not, for I was filled with laughter. I am telling you only what I saw. I saw that the scholar told him thus, and I saw how the sheep entered his house. The sheep were hungry. The sheep were hungry. They needed to eat. They found good foods, and there remained nothing to eat. The sheep ate everything. All that he needed to eat, they ate. The sheep, the sheep. Where did the sheep come from? I do not know where they came from. Where they came from. I do not know where they went. They ate, they ate everything. Nothing remained. Nothing remained, and they had nothing to eat in the house. Where are the sheep? They ate and left. Chapters, Segulas, and Healings. A family whose son was slated to undergo an operation came to receive advice from Rabbi Yisrael. 
God is great and He can grant a healing without operations and without treatments. I was very sick and all the doctors said that I needed an operation. Operation? He must have an operation. And also the second major doctor said, how is it possible? He has a growth. It needs to be removed and if not, it will grow and grow and grow. We must operate. And I said to the doctor, no, I don't want an operation. So I did not have an operation and it passed away in peace, completely, without an operation. The disease passed away completely without any operation. If a person would merit to study the Torah, the words of Rabbeini, he would have a healing. But he did not. But he does not rise to the challenge. He is not strong. One needs to be strong. The words of Rabbeini are effective. They bring a person such salvations and wisdom and knowledge like nothing that was ever in the world. Yes, there is a miraculous story of how my daughter was born. The birth was in our home. This was in the old city near the wall, and the midwife Fagler was in our house, so there were birthing difficulties and the doctor said that it was impossible under any circumstances without operating. And I was in the house, I heard, and saw how the doctors asked Fagler, what do you say now? And asked Fagler, what do you say now? Then she said, wait. They had already picked up their instruments, instruments to do the operation. And if there had been a different woman there, she would have told the doctors to do the operation. But she, Fagula, was the, was, the one, was the one in the house, and she told the most expert doctors in Yerushalayim, wait, wait, wait. So they did not do a thing. They waited. And all the time they asked Fagula, Fagula, what do you say now? What, what to do? And she answered, to wait. The synagogue was very close to my house, and Rabbi Shlomo Bexler and I and several other friends did dancing to sweeten the judgments until my daughter began to come out miraculously. And thank God my daughter is here. She came out without, without an operation. There was one doctor... There was one doctor from Tiberia, he was already very old, and he gave treatment to all of Tiberia, and he was he and he was my brother's doctor, and my brother worked as a clerk for him. Then I asked him to see me. For fifty years he was my doctor, and now I and now I am his doctor. I teach him how to deal with me. Rabbi Yisroka Dunar ate bread with tea, without sugar, and he was always healthy. He had no dealings with doctors. If doctors were needed, if there were doctors, it was not relevant to him. If doctors were needed, if doctors were needed, if there were doctors, it was not relevant to him. He was always healthy and always happy. Rabbi Naftali Koyen had a very serious disease, typhus an infectious disease. He did not want a doctor and the neighbor said, what? He has a high fever. He does not know where he is. Bring a doctor. Then his wife went to bring a doctor and the doctor came to Rebbe Naftali and stood by the door. Then Rebbe Naftali said to him, angel of death, leave my house. The doctor was offended and asked, where's the door? The doctor was very angry. He said to Rebbe Naftali's wife, what is this? What kind of, what kind of behavior? I've been a doctor for many years and I never heard words like these. Then she told him, he has a high fever. He does not know what he is saying. There are doctors who are false. They say that they are doctors, but they don't know anything. Doctors know what is healing. They don't know what is healing. They are liars, not doctors. They say that they are doctors, and they are liars. Rabbeini calls doctors murderers. Rabbi Yisrael is asked about a girl who was burnt by hot water and the brackets. Con concentrate of Wisatsky tea. Make a liquid and apply it to the place of the burn. Concentrate of Wasatsky tea. Make a liquid and apply it to the place of the burn. Then it will leave immediately. It will heal the burn instantly. The pains and everything. This is better than all the treatments. All the doctors. This is better than all the treatments. All the doctors. The main point is the liquid of Wasatsky tea. Have no fear. It will immediately heal. Renew everything. Rabbi Yisrael is asked about segulas in the matter of eating and various practices according to Rabbeinu. Cow liver is good. It strengthens and heals the body. There is a principle that eating a limb strengthens the corresponding limb. For example, eating feet strengthens, strengthens, the, strengthens the feet. The liver of a cow is better than, than of chickens. The cow has more power. 
great green onions are permitted to eat. The green ones do not have so much poison in them. Eggs fatten the body. There are those who say that it is not good to eat more than one egg a day. But I think this is not valid. If the body wants an egg in the morning and the evening, then perhaps there is no problem with it. There is a big distance between the eating of the eggs morning and evening. It says in Sefer Midas, looking at the esrig is a healing for the eyes. We need to honor and guard our clothes. This is important. One who attends to a sick person, he is exempt from praying and wearing tefillin. There is a teaching passed down among the people of Rabbeini that when a guest comes to one's house, he should not lie on the bed until the host has lied on it first to check if it is set to check if it is satisfactory. It is a segula for a sick person to sleep in a cave where a tzaddik is buried. My brother, my brother Benjamin was sick. He suffered craziness and was very and was very sick. And he slept alone in some cave of an ancient sage. And he had a healing that lasted all his life. He became totally healthy. This happened in a cave of an ancient sage. But I apply it to Rabbeinu as well. There was a sick person who spent the whole night at the grave of Rabbeinu of Rabbeini and Uman in the room where Rabbeinu is buried, and he received a healing. The Yisrael's asked about elderly people and the sick in hospitals. As long as the soul is still within the man, he needs to be connected to God, to the Torah. As long as he still breathes, it is forbidden to do actions either to hasten the process of death or to, forst or to forestall it, to let him be as he is until the proper time, until the pri until the proper time comes. When the time comes, the breath of life departs on its own. When the moment for passing on arrives, if he will give millions, he cannot add on even one moment. It is all in the hands of God, every moment of life. Nothing should be done either to hasten or to, for, or to forestall. No, it is forbidden to take any action. It, it is very good to live here one more moment, one more moment. We have no conception of what this is, no grasp, how such a holy entity can exist in this world. God knows we don't know. The calculation is above. Every moment is in the hand of God, not in our hands. The calculation is in the hand of the Holy One, blessed be He. Every moment that a person lives in this world in faith and truth, one does not need to take any actions. The time will come. It is forbidden to take actions that either hasten or prolong. Forbidden. It is forbidden to be wise. In brackets in this matter and in brackets. This is considered murder for a minute, two minutes, five minutes. But it is murder. This is very awful. Forbidden to hasten. Forbidden to take actions. That is all. Those who want to receive an inheritance from the deceased, they scheme. They think of how to end his how, how to end his how to end his life quickly. But it does not help them. Only in the time when God wants to claim the soul, then it is good. As long as God gives life, one needs to give the patient all that he, need, all that he needs to eat and drink and sleep and rest. Every moment of life is a matter of saving life. It is mercy, charity, and kindness. Charity and kindness is the trait of Israel. It is the Torah, charity and kindness. To help a friend if he needs something, to help him, to have mercy, mercy, but not to fear. May God have mercy on all the sick and on all those who have pains. May he heal them, each one, from all troubles. Do you pray every day by the grave of Rabbi, of Rabbi Shimon by Yechoi? Mention me for healing. In the merit of that, God will help you. One who prays for his friend is answered first. I cannot travel to Rabbi, Shimon, to Rabbi Shimon and speak to God, but he does what he does. He does not abandon us. Chapter Prayer and Repentance Rabbi Yisrael is told about a sick person who is in a serious condition. May God have mercy only to pray to pray. Try to bring him to repent. Enough. Finished. Repentance, repentance, there is nothing. God created everything and he creates new things. Faith, faith, I transgress, I transgress the Torah, but with faith, in an instant I return, I regret, I return. Enough, finished. The main thing is not to lose hope, only to start at every moment anew. From this point, from this point on, I am a Jew. I already received the Torah. I will do everything to keep the Torah and the mitzvahs. Yes, one speaks to God immediately. Praise to God that there will be healing. Immediately there is healing. One speaks to God immediately. Praise to God that there will be healing. Immediately there is healing. 
You only need to return in repentance. Master of the world, I did this and this. Have mercy on me. It is over. I will not do it anymore. Enough. Prayer, repentance, repentance immediately. And if, in brackets, it does not come, and the brackets, immediately, again, again. To pray, only to pray. To pray and to mention the name of Rabbeini and the name of the, and the name of the sick person. Immediately healing will come. And if not, then to pray again. To pray and to mention the name of Rabbeini and the name of the sick person. Immediately healing will come. And if not, then to pray again. We need to tell the sick person to say, Good. It has in it all the salvations and all the healings. Rabbeini is merciful and heals immediately. Even a sick person who cannot be healed, even a sick, even a sick one who has no healing, Rabbeini can heal him as well. May God heal him and give him length of days and years and all the healings and all the healings and all the salvations that he needs immediately. Master of the world, Master of the world, put in the heart of this holy and awesome tzaddik and in the heart of all the true tzaddikim not to hide their faces from me and to stand by me as upright as upright advocates to search among my merits and to strive to find good points in me and speak well on my behalf that you should draw me close to you in mercy and give me a new heart and instill in me a new spirit that I should merit to awaken from now in truth and to return to you in truth and with a full heart Oh, in heaven, protest for me on my behalf, all masters of mercy and compassion. Have mercy on me, all those lying in the dust. Plead all those lying in the dust. Plead for one sinking in the murky depths without a foot, without a foothold such as me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing before God, before you. And the meditation of my heart be pleasing before you, God, my, ro my rock and redeemer. chapter. In come and trust. Rabbi Yisrael sings, Happy is the man who trusts in you. Happy is the man who trusts in you. Oy, oy, oy. Happy is the man who trusts in you. Happy is the man who trusts in you. I did not merit to fulfill this. I remember when I had ten small children asking for bread, only bread, and I did not have any to give them. I suffered, and I and the children suffered greatly from hunger. But even so, if I were to cast this onto God, I would have profited more. Now I regret this, but now it is already after the fact. When one has small children who need bread, and he has no bread to give them, this is a great test. My wife did not want clothes or anything, only bread, and I did not have bread to give her. And if only I had not had mercy on my wife, and if only I had not had mercy on my wife and my children, and to leave everything to God, to believe and strengthen, to believe and strengthen myself and trust in God, that would certainly be better. Oh yeah, that would certainly be better. I am here. I tell about the greatness of God, that He gives bread to all creatures. I, 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 happy is the man who trusts in you, happy is the man who trusts in you. To fulfill, to fulfill this, not only to say it, I wanted, is now the time? No, it is already, a, it is already after the fact. I did not merit, did not merit to stand in the test. I had such wealth in my hands, and I abandoned it for money, for income. I saw that God shows that He is the owner of the house, for me and for all the world. All of my life I had doubts concerning this matter, or concerning another. What to do, and now I have no doubt that I did not do good. I am embarrassed to tell it. I was given tests, and I did not stand in them, and, I, and did not merit to overcome. I worked and worked, and did not merit to this. I had many things, ways to earn money, but if I had abandoned it all to serve God, I would have merited, and it would have been a different matter. I, I did not do good that I did not merit to fulfill happy is the man who trusts in you. I regret and regret and regret. I want, I want, I want. But it is not possible. I have a, I have a story to tell. I sat in the yeshiva and wrote fundraising letters for the yeshiva income. I wrote letters to, to the effect that there are students sitting and learning Torah and they need to receive support. Then I said to myself, why do I need money? It's a waste of time. I will not write. But in spite of this I wrote. I wrote letters asking people to send money, income. So, I sat at the table and wrote letters in order to have income. A rabid dog came into the synagogue and stood by me and wanted to bite. And if he had bitten me, there would already have been nothing to do 
Then I said, alright, income? No. For what? To be attacked by a rabid dog? Thank God the dog did not bite, but I fell asleep and slept. Oy, great mercy on us, on one who works without having a real need, and does not merit to sacrifice himself to serve God, and to cast off all this world entirely, only to be occupied with his blittedness and tired and prayer. That is certainly better. A man needs to know for himself, and to pray that he should merit a man that needs to know for himself, and to pray that he should merit to abandon himself to serving God. For every minute of Torah and prayer, for every minute of Torah and prayer, it is dependent on the heart of the person, how much he wants it. It is better when a person is not wise and does not think very much, just to be strong, a hero, a mighty one. Well, according to one's might, one's heart, one merits the truth. I saw that the main point is dependent on the heart, according to the will. If a person does not look at the worldly affairs and cast himself onto God, onto faith, who owes you? The heart owes. Who owes you? The heart owes. If your heart was full, if your heart was full as would be as would be befitting, you would gain. If the heart was full as would be as would be befitting, you would gain. Certainly, all that a person does more in serving God, all the better. That is the ma that is a major principle. But to tell others what to do, that is difficult. According to the present decree, he has an income, and if he chooses to sacrifice more, he does not have an income. According to the present decree, he has an income, and if he chooses to sacrifice more, he does not have an income, and he will have confusions. Oh, and he will have confusions. I do not know. I do not know what to say. It is impossible to dictate to others. It depends on the person himself. If he is ready to sacrifice himself for serving God, certainly that is better. In any case, I do not know what to say, but I myself, I learned in my life that it is better to, f to offer oneself and to cast off everything in order to serve God. Come what may. Well, on the world... Well, all the world only speaks about income. Income, 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 income. Does he have an income? Income is a major test. What? The world will say crazy, crazy, crazy. And also, one's wife will say crazy. And also, the father and the family and all the world will say, that man is crazy. He had an income, but he gave it up in order to serve God. Rabbeinu said, when a person is lying, im heraglaim eladelis, with the feet facing the, the, the door, that's where they, that's how they place a dead man with his feet facing the door, with Imharaglaim Aladelis on his deathbed, then he deeply regrets not having listened to me. Well, fortunate is one who listens to Rabbeinu and strengthens himself to stand in opposition to the whole world. No one wants to lie with his feet to the door when being dead because then he will regret all the vanities of this world. That is what will be all the cravings for what? To cast away all the service, to cast away all the service of God for income? But the truth is, fortunate is the man who trusts in you. I also wanted like everyone. I wanted, but I did not have true intelligence. I ought to have thrown off everything and been involved only with Torah and prayer. Now I feel this. To this day I regret, but it is already after the fact. What can be done? It is impossible for me to do anything about it. The time has passed. I heard from one who told some story. A woman asked one of those serving God to do a mitzvah. She received a letter from her son, and she did not know how to read. So she asked the man to read the letter to, to read the letter for her, so she would understand what was written in it. She did not know the contents. So he read the letter and saw that her son had been sick and passed away. He did not want to tell her openly what was written there. It was written there that her son had passed on. So he told her that he did not know how to read what was written. If it says Nifter died, or Pifter, a nonsense, a nonsense word, meaning nothing, Pifter, a nonsense word, and she did not know the meaning of Pifter, so he said to her again, so he said to her again and again, Nifter Pifter, and again she did not understand what was Nifter, also a nonsense word due to the change in pronunciation. So she said, "What? What does it matter to me, Nifter Pifter?" The main thing, does he have an income? She shouted and said to him, Nifter Fifter, I don't want to know. That's not important. I only want to know if he has an income. Thus is the whole world. She shouted and said to him, Nifter Fifter, 
I don't want to know. That's not important. I only want to know if he has an income. Oh, she shouted and said to him, Nifter Fifter, I don't want to know. That's not important. I only want to know if he has an income. Thus is the whole world. Income, income, income. The meaning of the word is to work constantly only for money. Parnasa, the meaning of the word is to work constantly only for money. He has no time. He is in a hurry to get to work. What is money for? For nothing. What is there in, what is there in it? But when a man is lying with his feet pointed toward the door, he regrets deeply that he went after income, income, income. Then he knows already that he abandoned everything for money, for emptiness. We need to give everything to God, the income and the sleep and the eating, to serve God. This is a good story for the whole world. Oi, nifta fifter. What do you want from me? The main thing is, does he have an income? Oi, nifta fifter. What do you want from me? The main thing is, does he have an income? Yesterday, a man came to me and said, I do not know what to do. Thank God, I have an income. But it is with women who come and buy. And it is immodest. What should I do? Should I abandon the, the income or not? All the world, income, income, income. But the Hasidim of Breslev did not have an income. It was difficult for them to get married. For how can someone get married with no income? The parents would say to the daughters, You need to marry, but Breslev you cannot accept. How will you have an income? Go away from us. How will you have an income? Go away from us. According to the world, one who abandons income is crazy. But according to the truth, one needs to cast everything onto God, onto serving God. There is such luxury in the world, such wealth, toira and prayer. I also want, but now the time has passed. It is impossible to do anything. I heard that there is someone who wants to ask me what to do. He wants to serve God, but what will be with income? His mother said not to look for a wife until he will have an income. So I want to go to tell. I, so I want to go to him and tell him income only with God. When a person is lying with his feet to the door, then he will have an income. <laughs> Chapter Tikkun Chatzos Midnight near the forests of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai Meron. Rabbi Yisrael strengthens a chassid to rise at mir, to rise at midnight. To rise at midnight. In spite of all the words of the opposers, I overcame them and did not pay attention and suffered everything. I saw that the words of Lekita love Lekita Alachas are such words that instill our true purpose in a person's heart. In a person's heart, I also wanted to rise at midnight, but this was very hard. But he, Rabbi Sulkaduna, he rose at midnight with such longings for God. He left the room with the bed in its place and went out to the forest. Going outside the city is, is also difficult. In the winter, in the summer, always hard. There are rains and cold. But with him, all this was not relevant. He was such a hero, such a mighty one. He went even in the cold, in the winter, even in the rain. He woke at midnight and went to do his bodhidis to speak with God in the forest. This is a very great thing, above nature. He overcame his body and subdued it. Oh, I also wanted to rise at midnight. What? Midnight? How is it possible to sleep? This was in his Bodhidus of the Holy Ari and his holy students, taking Chatzois, Sharitzim. There are sh there are several chapters in the book Sharitzim, and one of them is taking Chatzois. And this is very difficult. Every day when midnight came, I wanted to sleep. So I bought a clock and Pachim Shalneft, metal canisters of oil, so that the sound probably empty from oil or maybe not so that the sound would be louder and would wake me I entered the store and, and and I did not have money at all well I wanted to buy a clock and I did not have even one coin on me but the owner of the store sensed and saw how all my life force was tied to this clock he did not think he did not think very much he said to me I will give you the watch when you have money pay me I was the only one who bought a clock like this every five minutes it woke me again and again and again, I thought, what is this, Rabbi Yisrael? Would you leave me? I cannot rise at midnight. What will be with me? I thought, what is this, Rabbi Yisrael? I thought, what is this, Rabbi Yisrael? Would you leave me? I cannot rise at midnight. What will be with me? Oy vey, oy vey, master of the world. The body wants to sleep, wants to return to bed and sleep. It is very hard work to rise at midnight. But I saw how Rabbi Yisrael rose. 
He was a good soldier. He served God with such a strong force. How is it possible not to say Tinkatsas? He went to the fields. There were no people there. Midnight is the time of the best sleep, and the people are all, are all asleep. And also, all the yeshiva students would stay up until midnight. And at midnight, they went to sleep. And he woke at midnight and spoke with God. He practiced his poetidis before God. It was such a level of his poetidis that he aroused the mercy which is beyond this world. The world does not know of this at all. To rise at midnight and go to the forest is only the work of Rebbeinu. What? Who can reach this? Who can maintain this? Who can maintain this level? What kind of work is, what kind of work is this? This is work more difficult than any in the world. Oi, oi, what does Rebbeinu want from us? Why did he give us chatzois? Midnight. It is so hard. Rebbeinu gave us only what is hard. Chatzois. This what it is. To go to the forest. All that is all that is hard. All that is all that is hard. All that is hard needs to be done for God. It is a miracle and a wonder that I am alive and that I am sitting here and telling and speaking about Rabbi Yisrael and Chatzois. What work the breast lovers did, the people of Rabbeini. Rabbeini gave them hard work. Chatzois. Oi, what? Is this a time to cry? Usually, this is the time of sleep. All the world is sleeping then. Rabbeinu chose the most choice time of sleep for us. In the winter, and the winds, and the rain. Rise and go outside, through the trees. Go there. Oh, something like this. Work like this. To rise and speak with God. If only you would go with this. With Chatzois. We would wake up the entire region. It would bring an arousal to all the surroundings. This is not insignificant. This is not, ins this is not insignificant. The self-sacrifice involved in this. This is our self-sacrifice. If we would merit, if we merited, we would pray with such arousal that it would awake, that it would wake in the whole world. Yes. When we will rise at midnight and scream in the fields, then all the surroundings will hear. What is this? Who is there? Crazy people. We give all our life force to God. Chatzois, oy vey, oy vey, just to see Rabbi Yisrael was enough to know from Rabbeinu. He was the merchandise of Rabbeinu. One who heard his prayers and his bodhidis, it could turn the whole world into tzaddikim. One who only heard the prayers of Rabbi Yisrael was made holy and pure. A holy and pure tzaddik. I saw one of the people of Rabbeinu, Rabbi Yisrael Kaduner, how he served God with what strength. With what wisdom, with what attachment, he was entirely absorbed in, absorbed in God, entirely. And what he suffered in this world is impossible to understand and conceive. How such a thing is possible? He was so filled with might and strength. Without strength like he had, it would be impossible to achieve what he, had, what he did. I saw such wonders. I saw how Rabbi Yisrael served God with such self-sacrifice. Midnight is very difficult work. And he went out to the field in the night. No one knew that he had gone where he had gone, where he was. He was in the forest and he cried before God and prayed for us, to rectify us. Rabbein tells in his stories of the princess who ran away. She went to sleep and in the morning no one knew where she was. She was lost. Rabbein tells in his stories of the princess who ran away. She went to sleep and in the morning no one knew where she was. She was lost. The king said that the no good should take her. And the second to the king, he sacrificed himself and went to the fields to search for the princess. This is such a force. Rabbi Yisrael was able to rise at midnight and go to the forests. And he had business to do. He spoke with God. Yes, I did not sleep. When midnight arrived, I saw Rabbi Yisrael. Even in the times when he was sick, he rose at midnight and went to the forest and cried before God and spoke with God. He would speak with God and would cry until he became a tzaddik, a holy tzaddik. All that you hear from me, it is all not even a drop from the sea. Siddiquim becomes similar to their creator. Even though it is impossible to envision God, yet the Siddiquim, Siddiquim becomes similar to their creator. And in particular, I saw such wonders, wonders from the world to come, such wonders, 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 wonders. I only saw and heard Rabbi Yisrael Kaduna pray, enough. I saw only Rabbi Yisrael and heard what I heard. These were such wonders that were above all the wonders. Never before were there revealed wonders like these in the world. There are no words to speak. And I only heard and saw the work of Rabbi Yisrael. I did not need anything. And I only heard and saw the work of Rabbi Yisrael. I did not need anything. He had a drop from the sea from Rabbeinu. Oi, oi, oi. 
how many words Rabbi Yisrael spoke with me. All his words had the intention that perhaps he would succeed in instilling within me some word, some light of God. Perhaps I would have, so, I would have some good from this. And thank God he succeeded. And I sit here and I speak and tell of the wonders I saw. Such wonders. Chatzois, like nothing seen in all the world. Thank God that there are places like these in the world that no one in the world knows about. The world does not know. All the world studies and does not know the way of truth and the holy way of Rabbeinu. No, all the world does not know of this. The world thinks, what is this? Chatzois, at midnight one needs to sleep. And Rabbeinu gave us the opportunity to fulfill, to fulfill the Torah and the mitzvahs. He practiced his buddhists before prayer. He taught his people the matter of his but it is. Rabbeinu gave us prayer. According to the world, prayer is a joke. They think, what is this but it is? What is it to speak to God? But with us, this is a major principle. The world does not know what is prayer. What is chatzois? Without Rabbeinu, one is like an orphan. He is missing the primary point. We live and were created for the Torah, to learn the Torah and fulfill it. The Torah is not for, for our own needs. Not to be a rabbi, not to be famous. The people of Rabbeini were tzaddikim. All their lives were given to rising at midnight and telling God of their struggles, all their falls. All their lives were given to rising at midnight and telling God of their struggles, all their falls, all their cravings. They fulfilled the Torah with self-sacrifice. For every point of the Torah, they sacrificed themselves. Enough for me to have known of one of the people of Rabbeini, Rabbi Yisrael Kaduner. I already saw our righteous Mashiach. This, Rabbi Yisrael Kaduner, he was tied and attached to Rabbeini with such self-sacrifice and with such wisdom that it is that is impossible to speak of verbally. No, impossible to tell, to describe, and to imagine. It is impossible to tell of his praise and to speak some word. He was tied and attached to God with, with such force, with such wisdom that never was. No. In the time of midnight is six hours into the night, always. In the winter, in the summer, six hours into the night is midnight. We say, Tikkun Chatzois, there are books, supplications, Shai Sion. Shai Sion has the Tikkun Chatzois and prayers for every day of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And afterwards, one talks to God, there is a spoiletis, and one begs to God in the prayers of midnight. What will be with us? We need to speak with God and tell Him everything. Perhaps one fell into some craving. Tell it immediately to God. Master of the world, I fell. I did such and such. Forgive me. Help me from now on that I will, be, that I will not do it again. I saw how Rabbi Yisrael said psalms, how he prayed. He was constantly tied to God in faith and joy. He would say Tikkun Chatzois and also other prayers and psalms. He cried before God that he should forgive him and help him to fulfill the Torah. Perhaps... He had had a lapse in the night, perhaps he had fallen into some craving. Then he would speak and tell it before God, Master of the world, I am such and such, I ate, I drank, I am such and such. He cried before God that he should help him to overcome and to conquer his evil inclination. Aha, how Rabbi Yisrael satik chatzois. It was a sort of a in which he would plead before God to help him, to illumine the world with the light of Rabbeinu, which is the main point and the basis of all the service of, and all service of God, of everything. This illuminates the world with such light that a person flees from sleep, breaks sleep with a great might, with such a force. Oy, oy, if I have not received, just to receive the service, just to see the service of Rabbi Yisrael, how he was always with God, how was his midnight. He went to the forest in the night at a time when it, when it was dangerous. There were murders and robbers. Turkey was occupying, and how he pleaded with, and he, and how he pleaded such pleas, such weeping, such a heart, such longings, such a thing is not known and not heard of in the world. It is a great secret hidden from all the worlds. This is only Rabbeini. And his primary service was his longings that God would have mercy on him. Something like this is not seen in all the world. Such longings, such a heart. How was he in, the, how he in, how was he in this world? How? 
Oy, there are no words to speak, to describe, impossible to describe such a thing. This is a spiritual thing. But Rabbi Yisrael inspired in my heart. His voice is embedded in my heart and in all my limbs. He would hum such a melody, the melody of the Mashiach. Oy, oy, such longings. To hear a voice like this, a voice of such longings, such weeping, such attachment. One who merited to touch, to listen to the taking chatzos of Rabbi Yisrael. It was, sort of, it was a sort of his bodidus and such longings that I would give the entire world all that he wanted. I would give him as a gift. I learned in the yeshiva, and in the yeshiva there were scholars, and they learned in the night. But something like this, that he inspired the heart with the matter of taking chatzois, that he inspired the heart with, with the matter of taking chatzois, that he inspired the heart with the matter of taking chatzois, this was a matter of his boidedis. Every word was a sort of his boidedis to God that he should have mercy on him. One merits to receive this only, only with Rebbeini. Such a heart and such pleas cannot be found. Cannot. This is sealed and hidden from all the world. Oh, midnight, Rebbeini. The members of the Great Assembly established, established three prayers, the morning, afternoon, and evening prayers. Three prayers. Rabbeini came and added another prayer, Tink Chatzois of the Holy Re. Tink Chatzois is necessary. This is Rabbeini. What he does for us, he said, Tink Chatzois, the fourth prayer. Tink Chatzois of our Rebbe, the Holy Re, is from Shari this, uh, this is the establishing of four prayers. One prayer more. It, has, it is a kind of espoitedis and such longings, the prayers of midnight, such arousal, such arousal that is nowhere else in the world. The Holy Ari revealed this, and Rabbeini gave it to the whole world. Midnight, get out, get out of bed. We need to sacrifice ourselves for this and not to listen to any voice in the world. Oh, yeah. our Rebbe, the Holy Ari, established Tink Chatzois, and Rabbeini gave the whole world a rectification through this. According to most of the world, Tink Chatzois is for special people. What, for simple people to pray Tink Chatzois? Who are you? Is Tink Chatzois for you? Rabbeini came and gave it to everyone. Chatzois, Chatzois, Chatzois. What this is, the opposite of the world. They think, what is this? Only the crazy breast lovers rise at midnight. That is the most choice time for sleep. The, prim the primary time for sleep is after midnight. What is with them? What do they want? They are crazy. They rise at midnight and go to the fields. There, there are wild animals and snakes and spiders, scorpions and Arabs and evil powers. With Tikin Chatzois, one destroys all the evil powers. Evil winds, evil Ruchais Royce, I think, or Shandaladim all the evil powers and Rabbeini evil spirits evil powers and Rabbeini said thus in this with Tink Chatzois one destroys all the evil powers and Rabbeini said thus in this language if I had an only son I would send him out to do his bodidus yes to the fields what is so bad with fields one could think why specifically in the fields in one's room is not good in one's room is not good in one's room is also good but in the fields it is better in the fields no one knows one comes back in the morning and no one knows what he does in the middle of the night before the prayers Rabbi Yisrael would rise at midnight no one knew and he served God hiddenly also for me only occasionally only occasionally I merited to see I merited to see a bit but only occasionally I merited to see a bit not everything and when it came time and when it came time for the morning prayers he was obliged to interrupt he sacrificed himself to interrupt in order to pray the morning prayer. He had so many words to say to God, to speak and speak and speak, and to speak and speak and speak. Such weeping, such longings. The world knows nothing of this. What, without taking chatzois, is that breastlift? To enter into paradise, into the morning prayers, without taking chatzois? What kind of prayer is that, without taking chatzois? Oy, the taking chatzois of Rabbi Yisrael. Oy, the chatzois of the people of Rabbeinu. Such a chatzois. Anyone with some spark of the feeling of chatzois. It is all of Judaism. All of the Torah. All of faith. All of self-sacrifice. Chatzois. One word. Chatzois. Oy, the prayer of midnight. Oy, the supplications and prayers of midnight. Such verses that arouse the heart. In the morning when one starts to pray, one prays a special prayer. Not from this world. Chatzois makes such prayers. Oy vey. Oh, I don't know you and he would rise at midnight and go out in the winter to the mikveh Sfas. In the night, it is very cold. He went to the cold mikveh without a light, and there was such deep darkness that one could die. And he went thus to the mikveh in the rain, in the water and the winds. He went out to the forest. Well, all of Sfas were asleep. Only one breast lover was awake. No one knew how Rabbi Yisrael sacrificed himself for midnight. What? He was flesh and blood like us. 
It was hard for him also to rise at midnight and go out to the forest. I saw how Rabbi Yisrael went in simple clothing, and his body was skin and bones. Rabbi Yisrael's body was not pleased with him. Rabbi Yisrael gave his body bread and tea, and also he would, he would do fasts from midnight until noon. He would pray to Chatzois and the morning prayer and his bodhidis, and who knew his cries? his longings, his midnight prayers for the destruction of our holy temple, his heart and his feet, and all his body. Oy, oy. Oy, na nach nach mo, nach mo mi yuma. Na nach nach mo, nach mo mi yuma. Na nach nach mo, nach mo mi yuma. His heart and his feet, and all his body. Oy, oy. And Yisrael went at midnight to the western wall at a time when it was dangerous due to the non-Jews to go due to the non-Jews to go there. The wall was amidst the non-Jews. The Temple Mount was in the hands of the non-Jews. I was there in that time. I was there and I saw how he sacrificed himself, that perhaps a non-Jew would come and murder him. He gave everything to God and he had such longings, such holiness, only to hear the recital of, we have been guilty, we have betrayed, we have been guilty, we have betrayed, stolen, we have betrayed, stolen, spoken, doifi, sinned, and so with all the words he said before God, Oi, I heard how you would say, We have been guilty, we have betrayed, we have stolen. When you said we have stolen, we have spoken doifi, we have sinned, we have been evil. We have been evil, we have been brazen. It was a miracle that any vitality remained in his body, the way that he, the way that he felt. He told all his heart before God, all his troubles. He aroused such mercies, taking chasois what this is what he felt, how he would plead and weep before God, such as what it is, such words, such longings. Who can describe or imagine how every word sounded? Enough just to hear we have been guilty. And after that, we have betrayed. It is a miracle that he remained alive. This was a great miracle from heaven. He could have expired from the intensity of the anguish. We have been guilty. We have betrayed. He related all the words to God. We have been guilty. We have betrayed. We have spoken doifi. May he rest in peace, sitting in the night. What it was, what it was, such secrets. The midnight of Rabbeini and of the Holy Ari. Rabbi Yisrael had exploited this in these hours and he spoke with God. We have been guilty, we have betrayed, we have spoken doifi. Every night he would rise for the midnight of our Rebbe, the, the Holy Ari. He had such a hospital is. Who can describe or imagine what there is in this, what there is in the world? Such longings, such secrets. He truly left the world as if he had already passed away. When he said, we have been guilty, we have betrayed, we have stolen, we have spoken doifi. Who can imagine or describe longings like these? We have been guilty, we have betrayed, we have stolen. He opened the treasures of God. A letter from Rabbi Sol Kaduner that he wrote to his student and friend Rabbi Nosan Baitelmacher from Trevich. Brought in the Sefer. He would speak with God and would cry until he became a holy tzaddik. He opened up all the treasures of God. He opened up all the treasures of God.